Hello and welcome to Kedrick Farms. We're back with another episode of UMRV Upper Mississippi River Valley and today we're going to be doing a little bit of the last minute fall work here that I completely forgot about. We have done the second cutting on this grass field back here because my intent was to turn it into an actual field. And so I have decided that I was going to replace our uh, ripper with this 2410 uh, chisel plow. We're going to be running out here and turning this grass over into an actual field. This is going to let me apply some uh, fertilizer out here and get a little bit more yield. Also going to let me hopefully run course play here on these fields in the future and really streamline uh, getting hay for the animals. So with all that in mind, let's see if I can uh, get this working here. We've got allow create fields on with the plow and I'm going to have to be careful not to uh, widen this out too much, create too big of a problem. I'm not super picky about getting every last ounce of this field. Uh, in fact, I can't even get through here with this uh, wide of a vehicle to go down in between this tree. So I think we're going to just uh, circle around here and maybe not get every last bit of this field. I'm not as worried about uh, the amount of land we get just so long as I can more easily work the land that we have. So we're going to try and watch out for all of the hazards around this field. We may have to come back in with the landscaping tool when I'm done with this and just uh, bring us back off of the edge a few places. I'm notoriously bad at driving larger implements like this with any amount of care. Like right here, I'm going to go a little bit closer to the creek than I'd care to. That's all right. And we should be able to actually make quite short work of this field with such a wide implement. I was originally uh, thinking about not coming down on the side of this hill at all, but there's so much uh, area down here that I think we're going to give it a try. And if the uh, course play drivers don't seem to be able to handle coming down here on the side hill, we can always uh, use the landscaping tool to paint back over this uh, a little bit later. The reason I'm doing this now instead of waiting for spring is that November is the last month that I'm able to plant grass and I'd love to get it planted here before we head into the winter months. I'm not sure if it'll grow or not in the uh, next few months, but I figured it's better to get the seed in in the winter here rather than uh, wait till the spring. I think it'll at least get a start before we get to the spring months. And also just we're going to be busy in the spring with getting the actual crops, quote unquote, into the ground. Ooh, I don't want to hit my driveway. We're so close to it there. I might have to uh, clean that up a little bit too. And there's some pretty steep areas here, like right behind the shed. I don't think I need to get any closer to that than I already am. I think this is going to be just fine. And I also think I'm going to leave a bit more here by the gates. I'm not going to try and get right up next to it. We're going to just have a nice gradual curve here, have everything line up and uh, look nice here. Perfect, perfect. We're going to take a second pass around the field here just to make sure I've got plenty of room and then I can bust out GPS and do the long rows here to speed this up.
All right. Well, after a uh, quick shopping trip up to the dealer here, we have uh, gotten this awesome uh, drill here. Now, this one doesn't actually have any fertilizer uh, mechanics on it, unfortunately. It's just the drill, the N542C. Uh, this has been one of those mods I've used a couple of times in the past, but uh, I always feel like I'm not on the right size farm for it when I use it. And this field here at least feels like the perfect size for uh, this drill. Because we're probably going to be doing just uh, some grass, maybe some alfalfa and clover at some point here with it. And I thought, why not uh, give it a shot, see how it works. We're going to have a, another set of equipment here to spread some fertilizer at some point onto these fields. And I'm not too worried about it. Ooh, this has got some awesome air drill noises. That uh, high-pitched whine, it sounds like I'm in an airplane. And I went ahead and grabbed the uh, 9620 here. I thought that this would be an appropriate vehicle to pull this around with. Our 7810 is a bit too small. I do still need to come in here and clean some things up with the landscaping tool, but I'm not too worried about it right now. We'll get back into that uh, a little bit later. We're just going to toss the crops in now while we're thinking about it, and we'll see, we'll see how things do a little bit later here and clean up our landscaping in the spring probably it's just uh grass going in anyway so it's not like this is uh terribly expensive to put in we're not gonna lose a lot of progress or anything and this thing goes pretty fast 12 miles an hour feels like i'm really booking it compared to uh some of the slower jobs i mean we were plowing at nine which was actually pretty fast as well but uh, yeah, this air drill is working great. And much like the uh, plow that we were just using, the wings seem to be flexing and handling the uh, hilly terrain here quite well. It's interesting that grass doesn't have a variable seed rate for uh, precision farming here. I guess it wouldn't really matter. I mean, grass is grass, so I guess that kind of makes sense. I'm a little close to the fence here. I think we're going to have to get the landscaping tool out for that and we've completely messed up that turn let's back up and try that again sometimes the articulated steering uh, gets the better of me here and we're still messing it up but I'm gonna err on the side of uh, hitting all of our areas rather than missing it maybe oh we can't drive folks we can't drive I got so attuned to the much wider plow that we were driving that now I'm uh, airing too far away from the outside edge with my vehicle. I need to learn to use the implement as a better point of reference here. Let's get a GPS line set up while we're here. And we might as well take off a couple of headland passes here real quick before we actually start using the GPS line that we set up. But at least I've got it on the right heading that I wanted it on. like simply uh, driving through the tall grass with the drill has deleted the bushes from the sections that I had uh, plowed earlier which is pretty cool so I guess there's no need to figure out how to get rid of the bushes now I'm excited we will have to clean up the landscaping just a bit though I'm a little close to a couple of these trees and I know for a fact that uh, course play is going to struggle with that so 
We'll get that cleaned up here, but I'm not too worried about it. We've got just a couple of passes left here on putting these uh, grass in. We have not used nearly as much seed as I was expecting. I did not need to uh, put quite so much in here. It's interesting is that uh, for grass seed, it shows up as a grass fill type and it only is going to give me uh, tons or uh, cubic yards for that. I can't actually see uh, it in bushels or anything like that, which is okay. I just I'm used to thinking of seed by uh, a bushels as a unit of measure. But uh, unit convert is currently set up uh, not to allow me to do that with grass. I'm sure I could go in and change it, but it's not a big deal. I have to say, this drill has been working out quite well. It's going to be a nice addition to the farm. We are likely going to do some alfalfa and clover this year. I think what we're going to do is just find a couple of smaller fields and try those crops out. I think it'll be something a little bit different, a little bit uh, new. I always like trying all the new crops that come out with a given field. And those are custom crops that uh, DJ Modding has added to this map. I was tempted to put alfalfa back here into this field, but we just didn't do it. Uh, maybe I'll take the big peninsula part over here of the other field in the spring, and we'll try some alfalfa or something out there. Uh, I am wondering if I'm going to cut the grass that's on there in the spring first, though, just to get a little bit more hay uh, stacked up until we can grow our next round of crops here. Since this field may be a little bit behind, I'm saving that other field to cut in the spring. I don't know if I'd have enough space to store it all right now if I uh, chopped it. The silo is not full, but we're over halfway full with the uh, silo there, so we want to make sure we're not going to put any of it to waste and we already sold the baler so i'm not planning on doing any more baling or did we no we didn't actually sell the baler either way i'm kind of over the baling phase of things right now and i'm looking forward to continuing to move on with uh, getting back into some regular crops i can't wait to start planting season here all right, so with all of our fall tillage done and getting that grass seeded, we've gone ahead and put all the equipment up here in the shed. We're gonna get everything closed up here. We're expecting some snow here over the uh, winter for sure. And no need to leave uh, too much equipment sitting out in the yard. Our animals have been fed for the day already. And I think we've got everything pretty much buttoned up here. So we're gonna start uh, moving the time forward a little bit here and seeing what we can do to get into the next stage here. I don't think we've got a whole lot else going on until spring. I did install the time-saving stock check mod, which is actually really handy. It lets me see our uh, crops, even though they're in a production facility here, alongside their current price values and the maximum price values that we've uh, seen for those. Uh, Minneapolis would be the uh, train sell point, I believe. So I'm keeping my eye on this and they should turn green, kind of like you see over here, if we hit an optimal price that's uh, worth selling at. So I'm gonna keep an eye on that and we're gonna move time forward. It says my max months are in uh, March and July here. However, I seem to remember at least sunflowers. Might hit a higher point in February. Ah yeah, February, March, same difference. But uh, yeah, for sure, soybeans are not until uh, July. However, I think we are going to wrap the episode up here today. We're going to keep things uh, short and sweet. I've been a, a bit under the weather, unfortunately. And so we're going to make sure we get an episode out. And rather than uh, push ourselves, we're going to get things wrapped up here. We'll make sure there's an episode for Friday, uh, which is when this one should uh, launch. And then we'll be back uh, next week, Monday with another episode of UMRV and I'll have uh, moved us right up in here to spring and we'll start putting those crops in the ground. That's all for today. Keterk out. Oh man, folks, the uh, snow is starting to stack up out here. We may end up doing an episode where I have to dig myself out of the yard just to keep feeding the cows to move time forward. We'll, uh, we'll keep you posted. This little 4440 is really struggling. It's starting to get deep here. Oh no. 
You can do it. You can do it. Keep going. 